You guys still there? Yes. I'm here. All right. Okay. My start broadcast button isn't working. We haven't actually started yet, I don't think. <laughs> Attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to 30 on Thursdays, Suskutech's uh, twice a month webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about automating document management in SharePoint and looking at a really cool uh, example of doing some document management for uh, HR using a real world case study. But before we jump into that, just a couple housekeeping things. Um, if this is your first time on our webinar series, um, it is a bi-weekly 30 minute webinar that we hold every other Thursday um, uh, for 30 minutes starting at uh, 1.30. Uh, Eastern Time. Our next scheduled webinar is June 7th, uh, where we're going to do a SharePoint mobile app uh, review or rundown. We're going to take a look at some of the uh, the new and exciting uh, mobile apps that are out there, different from mobile views, but the mobile apps that are out there for uh, iOS, uh, Android, things like that. And you can get the full schedule of our webinars at suskutech.com slash webinars. And again, today's session, Automating Document Management in SharePoint, uh, our presenter is uh, Dave Tobias from Knowledge Lake. I am Steve Witt from Suskutech, and I will be your moderator. Uh, and I'll let Dave go ahead and introduce himself and uh, John Ferrugio from uh, Knowledge Lake. Thanks. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to you, Dave. Thank you. So my name is Dave Tobias. I'm a regional sales manager with Knowledge Lake. Uh, John Ferrugio with me today is a sales engineer. So John will be participating today, presenting, uh, presenting our solution to you. So give me a moment here while I just share out my screen. All right. Can everyone see the agenda slide, I hope? Yep, looks good. Steve, you can see it? Okay, super. So um, this was not meant to be an all-inclusive presentation for all that we do. We're going to have a focus today on how we can leverage SharePoint to automate human resources processes. I'll share with you a very quick success story and how a company called Build-A-Bear is using SharePoint and our technology to achieve that. And then we'll jump into a, a brief demonstration, just give you a sense of the breadth and the depth of what our technology can do with SharePoint to automate some of the, the more common, even some of the obscure human resource type processes, like onboarding a new employee, the alerts and notifications that get sent throughout the organization when a new employee is starting or an employee is getting offboarded, um, and how we can use the technology to create essentially digital employee files. So let me briefly uh, explain to you what it is that we do. So Knowledge Lake, uh, we're a software company. We're a software vendor in the Microsoft partner ecosystem. We've been developing software solutions exclusively for the SharePoint platform for about nine years now. So everything you'll see today that's being demonstrated has actually been designed uh, and developed from the ground up to work with nothing but that SharePoint platform. And for that work, we have almost nearly 2,000 organizations who are using our technology with SharePoint to automate um, any number of processes and functions that are driven very much by the documents and the workflows that are supported by those documents. Um, today, again, we'll be focusing on those human resource processes, but if you use your, your, uh, your creativity here, you can see how the technology has an enormous amount of applicability across any functions within the organization. Uh, but automating within human resources, uh, this is not meant to be a comprehensive list, just some examples of some things that we'll talk about and show you during the demonstration. Uh, but the process of getting a new employee on board into the organization, uh, all the documentation that goes along with that, and the collaboration that takes place between 
uh, various groups, human resources and the, the folks in payroll and accounting. Um, after an employee is on board and that selection process is complete, you have you know, subsequent uh, processes throughout that employee's life cycle in the organization, the evaluations, uh, changes to payroll and, and tax identification type things. Uh, we have existing human resource applications, I'm sure, um, that we can look to leverage and sort of integrate, if you will, with SharePoint and leverage those existing data sources, again, with the idea that we're going to help to automate processes from end to end throughout human resources. All right, so we'll give you several examples of how we do these things using SharePoint and the knowledge lake technology on top of it. At the end of the day, um, you know, what we are is we're, we're taking SharePoint and we're making it a, a more all-inclusive, user-friendly, uh, document management system. And so it has tremendous applicability to human resources. And folks over at build a -Bear, for those who have children or nieces or nephews or grandchildren, you're familiar with what they do. You walk into their store and you build a teddy bear. So this might be an extreme example. You may not be in retail. You may not have 400 plus remote locations. But they had a significant challenge with human resources, one being retail and having a fairly high turnover rate. So the onboarding and offboarding process was constant plus being decentralized with those remote locations, um, their cost of processing was extremely high. Um, it made it very difficult for the stores to communicate back to the corporate office in terms of documentation. If the store needed to retrieve that documentation related to a new employee or an old employee, uh, it was very difficult and time consuming. So using SharePoint and Knowledge Lake, they've been able to effectively provide those stores with a self-service environment, and they can now access very quickly the documents they might need related to an employee, uh, access an entire employee file in a digital way. Um, being able to scan at the store level, at the closest point of entry into the build a -Bear organization, they're now able to send that information over the wire back to corporate, and then using technology now to process, to leverage information, to automate, to sync up to their human resource management system, and start to automate the processes downstream. So here's what you can expect in the demonstration. Uh, we'll show you the key components of what we call enterprise content management and how they relate to human resources. One, the, uh, the ingestion of content, all unstructured content, the paper-based documents, the Word documents, the PDFs that come in through email, how we can facilitate the end user and get those documents into the process, into the system as quickly as possible with the least amount of burden on the end user. And to do so with very relevant information that we're going to use. Um, to automate the process, and we'll show you that in the demonstration. Um, downstream, as we're searching for documents, we need to find information. We need to uh, um, find individual or linked documents that create that employee file. We'll show you a very relevant and very targeted way in which we can search the repository to find the information that we need. Um, and we'll finish with a demonstration of once we've found the content that we need, how we can view it, how we can interact with it, and how we can use it to, to leverage SharePoint for all that it can do with with versioning and workflow and task assignment and collaboration, what we can do through our viewer to facilitate that, all the while leveraging SharePoint under the covers. And of course, in between all the wonderful workflow things that you can do with SharePoint that we also help to facilitate. And we'll show you how we capture the data from all of these human resource documents so we can leverage the workflow that SharePoint provides and use your rules that govern your policies and your procedures and human resources to automate. And then that should cover the demonstration. So while I switch over to John, if there are any questions on Knowledge Lake or who we are or what we do, feel free to raise your hand. John, I have made you the presenter. Okay, Dave, thank, thank you. Um, I've just uh, shared out my desktop. Do you actually see my email? Yes, we see it. Okay, great, great. So uh, to start out the demonstration, as Dave mentioned, uh, part of the solution that um, I'll basically uh, demonstrate um, are the various different methods that uh, we as Knowledge Lake bring um, to an organization to help uh, the ingestion process of, of getting content into SharePoint. Um, for those of you that are on the call um, and are familiar with getting content into SharePoint, um, obviously you can get content into SharePoint without using Knowledge Lake tools, but uh, it tends to become um, a pretty uh, mouse click laborious process um, and relying on the users uh, basically to um, 
understand where they need to upload that content and what uh, sites and subsites and document libraries that, that content needs to, to reside in. So the value proposition that we deliver with, um, uh, you know, for SharePoint, um, you know, and especially in, in, in a case here where uh, maybe I am a HR clerk um, and I receive an email from one of my employees indicating that they have updated their emergency contact information. Um, and I have an attachment, a PDF file that's an attachment, um, you know, to this email. Um, you'll notice that on my email ribbon bar here, uh, I do have some knowledge like adding capabilities. So uh, we do have Outlook integration um, that allows the user to quickly import this document uh, right into the appropriate document library um, that the uh, documents need to reside in. So here you notice that I will have various different options. I could export the message only. I could export the uh, attachment only. I could export the uh, message and the attachment to separate documents or as an embedded file, embedded meaning that the true outlook.msg file would be stored in the document library. In this, in this example, maybe I'm just concerned uh, with getting this attachment into the appropriate you know, uh, employee file. Uh, so this is an employee file for George Washington. When I click on the export uh, function, uh, we simply open up the uh, the document, uh, you know, so that the HR clerk can validate that all the information was indeed, um, you know, collected for that file. Um, and then over on the right hand side here, this is a indexing panel that is basically presenting to the user um, from the HR site from the human resources site, the document libraries, and all of the appropriate content types and columns that have been assigned you know, to these components. So um, again, removing the guesswork for the user needing to navigate SharePoint and having to upload this into the appropriate library, what the user would quickly identify here is that I need to collect just the social security number um, so that I can appropriately route this document in the, in the right location in SharePoint. So once I actually type that uh, social security number into the field and once I tab out of the field, what I basically just demonstrated here is that we can leverage the metadata um, or the databases that already exist within uh, the line of business databases that already exist in organizations. So this perhaps is an example where uh, I am um, connecting into your human resources management system that basically has a list of employee social security numbers or employee IDs. I just type in that one um, uh, social security number and then it pre-filled in the, social, the um, first name, last name, and employee ID for the user. Uh, for the user. Once I click on uh, accept, this document now has been released out and stored in the appropriate document library uh, within within SharePoint. And so you can see here the release is in progress um, and then it basically will be stored in the appropriate library. Um, likewise, I can do the same uh, function from Microsoft uh, Word, from any Office products, whether it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, this is an example where uh, maybe, you know, John Adams has been an employee uh, for an organization for quite some time. Um, he's now uh, up for a review, and so a, uh, his his manager basically is performing the employee uh, performance review, uh, filling out this document, and right from within Microsoft Word, again, we actually have some knowledge lake capabilities where we can, you know, choose to archive this document uh, and store it into the uh, document repositories uh, efficiently. I can actually upload this as a PDF file um, or an, a Microsoft XPS file or I could actually index this as a true Microsoft Word document uh, using the DOC or DOCX extension. Once I click on index, what the user would be presented with is a indexing panel. Again, this is a panel that is being pointed to um, a human resources site collection. Uh, once that user would select the human resources site, they would be prompted with the content types that are uh, assigned to that site. Uh, I'll collect I'll basically select the performance review, and again, the user will actually be presented with the um, the columns uh, or the metadata that they need to fill out uh, for this document so that they can accurately and completely store it in the appropriate uh, repository within SharePoint. Again, the only uh, required field here is the employee ID number, 
Uh, I see the employee ID number on the document. I can simply type in 12342. Um, and once I select that, that value, um, it automatically fills in first name, last name, social security number. When I click on accept, that document now has been once again released out into the appropriate silo within, within SharePoint. So that just get, that gives some examples on uploading and ingesting uh, electronic documents, again, whether from uh, email or from your um, uh, office products. Uh, we also have a solution that allows the uh, users to actually scan documents, uh, whether they're leveraging a, a scanner that's connected uh, to their desktops or laptops or, or basically walking up to uh, multifunctional devices and be able to, you know, being able to stack a, uh, a number of documents on those multifunctional devices, hit the scan button, and those documents perhaps will be stored temporarily on a network network folder. Uh, when the user uh, basically goes back to their desk, uh, they can launch into this application into uh, a connect uh, into a capture application that allows the user to simply browse the network and to bring in the you know the documents that they already have scanned. Now, here I'm showing just an example of a two-page employment application that I've scanned followed by a I-9 form. Um, so um, here you can see that we are in a Microsoft-centric application. Uh, our knowledge of capture product is provides a look and feel of, of a Microsoft-centric application. We're adopting a ribbon-style interface that is grouping-like functionality uh, for the users to see what they can do um, once they have the content up on the screen. Uh, so when I click on the index button, again, this is a panel um, that is delivered to us right from SharePoint. If I mouse over um, the content type, you can see a little URL that uh, pops up in a menu that's simply indicating that I am pointing to that uh, human resources uh, site that pulls in all of the different content types. And again, based upon the content type that I select, it will present the user with the appropriate columns or index fields that they basically need to fill out uh, so that they, they can accurately store these documents in the repository. Again, given the fact that this is an employment application, uh, here the user can quickly identify that they need to type in first name, last name, social security number. Now, of course, I can actually tab into any of these fields and manually key in the data, but to facilitate um, and minimize the, the manual um, keying in of the, of the data, we also offer um, a point and shoot indexing capability where that I see the first name on the document on the image here and we open up a uh, sub menu so I, as soon as I uh, create a rubber band around the first name we open up a sub menu that's listing all of the index fields here uh, that you see on the indexing panel so once I click on the first name it basically performs a optical character recognition process to OCR that value into the first name field Again, I can basically um, repeat that operation for the last name, the social security number, um, and the phone number. And so you can see that the user can quickly um, begin the indexing process to collect the important information um, that is going to drive um, you know, some downstream processes. So again, the the metadata that's collected at the scan time, at the uploading process time, this is important and relevant information uh, so that, one, you can actually search for these documents once they're stored in the repository, as well as being able to um, facilitate and execute downstream processes such as workflow or retention policies uh, for certain given documents. Once I click on Accept, it now navigates down to the I-9 form. Uh, what's important here is the uh, social security number. Again, I could just quickly type in that, that social security number. Um, and again, um, a, a demonstration of leveraging the metadata um, that is found in your line of business uh, HR, HR management systems uh, that will automatically key in the employee ID, first name, last name, and so on. So at this point, uh, Steve, I just want to uh, pause momentarily before I actually switch into the search and review to see if there are any questions. So while John, while you're switching over there, clearly the interfaces have been designed with the end user in mind. It's a very burdensome part of getting these HR documents into the process. Nothing works downstream, nothing automates downstream unless everyone's using it. 
and then we have good behavior driven by you know easy to use technology. If folks continue to use G drives and inboxes as repositories and filing cabinets and offsite storage, it makes it very difficult, like it is today, to manage these processes in an automated way. So our linkage is back to SharePoint and all the configurations that are done in SharePoint to provide uh, that ease of use. The interfaces look like Microsoft Office, so it provides for ease of training um, and getting folks migrated over, sort of culturally, if you will, to the idea of using this new technology. So we're, we're going to switch now from the, OK, we've uploaded content. We've, we've tagged it with the data that we need, as John mentioned, to search and retrieve, which we're going to show now, or to automate the, the workflows. So John, if you can uh, start to demonstrate here how we leverage that metadata now to start searching, that'll be perfect. Correct, correct. So here you'll notice that uh, I'm in a SharePoint site, and I'm in an HR you know, site collection. And uh, at the landing page here, we actually have a search template that um, is, is customizable by the user um, to leverage that metadata that uh, basically was used on the uploading and ingesting process. So this is a search template that can be easily configured by the user uh, or by you know, uh, IT. Uh, leveraging those same metadata fields, so I can search uh, for content that's you know predicated on employee ID, social security number, first name, last name. You'll notice that some of the Boolean logic that um, is available as well, um, that you know the user can actually assign to any one of these metadata fields. Um, so in this example, if I wanted to search for, um, we'll keep the theme with uh, the last name of Adams. If I wanted to search for all of the employee files that are stored in HR with the last name of Adams. I can type in that last name, click on search, and we provide a um, result set in a result set web part, uh, you know, bringing back all of the documents that relate to um, the last name of Adams. So here in my result set columns, I can see the content types, I can see the employee IDs, the first name, the last name, social security number, uh, dates, and so on. Right from the search result window, um, we basically have some, you know, grouping capabilities where, uh, because this now I have multiple different, you know, employees, I could have multiple different employees with the last name of Adams. What I can do is quickly identify and group the specific documents. Uh, I can take any one of these column headings and drag it into the gray area so that now I can group by first name as the example. So quickly here the user can, you know, uh, uh, adjust their view to see all of the Abigail um, Adams documents uh, as well as the John Adams documents. Again, you see so all of the content types. Yep. Here, here's where we start to get to the idea of creating these digital employee files, right? These documents are living in different places inside of SharePoint. The end user does not have to know where they live. Um, to collect them and create this digital file, if you will, we just perform that metadata-based search. And now I have all of the human resource documents all of the employee file documents I need for Abigail Adams. And they're presented to me in that way. And it doesn't matter if IT changes the, the taxonomy of SharePoint and moves a particular library containing a particular content type to a new location, it's still going to show up because our search is metadata driven, not, not, con not constrained by the structure and the location of those documents. It makes it much easier for the folks who are trying to find the content. Uh, search, and I'll give you a quick stat here. In general, searching an organization of a thousand employees. This is what I've heard recently. A thousand employees will spend between two and a half and three and a half million dollars a year of employee time just trying to find documents that uh, may not even exist, were misfiled, or the time spent recreating those documents when they can't be found. So, search becomes a very, very critical part of our solution. No matter what we're automating, whether it's HR, AP, claims processing, student registration, etc. Correct. So I could also add any one of these column headings here. If I click on the, um, I'll use the content type as the example. If I click on this little funnel icon, this basically presents the user with the ability to filter out information. So maybe the user is just required, you know, wants to see all of the I-9 forms and the identification documents. And you'll notice how uh, all of the rest of the content types were filtered out. So again, this is all out-of-box functionality that's delivered with, uh, with our solution. Um, for those users that like to live and breathe within a line of business application, um, perhaps um, you know whether they're working in uh, in a CRM package or in a um, human resources uh, management system, 
um, and they want to execute, and they have, need to require execute searches to look for content. Um, we basically will provide the ability to, to execute those searches right from within those line of business applications. So here you can see that I, I have a you know a sampling of an HR uh, screen that has information about an employee. Uh, and what I can quickly do is click on um, a button that we overlay uh, into the into the system here that will allow the user to search for employee files directly from that line of business application. Um, and so we basically will take some of the parameters that that's found on that that window, uh, pass those parameters into a search URL, execute the search for the user, and then present the user with a result set right from uh, you know right from within that. Uh, uh, human resources management application. <clears throat> and it's building the, the search here. And so here you can see that it just retrieved all the information back for, for John Adams. So once I have the content and I have and I was you know uh, driven to a result set, um, if I wanted to take a look at a specific document, um, I can basically uh, expose what we call an inline property viewer. Uh, so if I look at um, if I click on this plus sign next to the i nine content type, it, it exposes an inline property viewer that exposes a thumbnail representation of what the document looks like, um, and then some of the information. Uh, again, this is all the metadata properties that is specific to this I-9 form. Uh, providing that I have privileges to do so, um, you know, within my pr permissions within SharePoint, uh, I may have privileges to change any of these metadata fields, and so I can basically do that right from within the inline property viewer, uh, as well as being able to launch the document into a more um, extensive viewer component. Um, so that I can launch into a viewer component that um, will provide the user with some additional capabilities. So if I wanted to launch the I-9 form in a few, uh, into a full, full viewer, um, this is the knowledge viewer that, get, that renders the document um, and basically, again, will provide some um, additional capabilities that the user can quickly um, interact and collaborate with these documents. So here on the ribbon style interface, you can see that I have some check-in, check-out capabilities um, supporting the, the standard SharePoint check-in, check-out, and versioning capabilities. I have the ability to manage the document as well, uh, which basically will say that if I need to uh, edit those properties, again, I can edit those properties in the panel on the right-hand side. I can declare that document as records. Um, if I need to email this document to uh, individuals external to my system or, or, or to my organization or internal in my organization, I can attach them as email attachments or links. Uh, as well as this is a very important feature here that we deliver is a link property. So right from this view, uh, and again, it's very important linking back to um, the metadata on how that metadata is collected. Um, and stored. Um, when I click on the links document, it, it, it actually performs a subsequent search for the user to quickly identify that, you know, I do have all of the required documents um, that are needed to make up a, um, uh, an HR employee file. So here the user can actually quickly see that we have the emergency contact information, we have an, uh, an equipment agreement that they've signed, we have the uh, identification document, but you, you can notice here that uh, this is just a quick visual that will alert the user to say that we do not currently have the W-4 form uh, for John Adams because basically you see a zero of one um, right next to it. So at this point, leveraging you know some of the out-of-box uh, SharePoint uh, workflows, I can basically start a workflow uh, or a task uh, so that I can initiate a workflow to uh, alert other members of my HR team to, you know, contact uh, John Adams to, you know, to get their I uh, their W-4 form, or even to notify John Adams, you know, by way of an email to notify that employee to indicate that we're still waiting to receive their um, their W-4 form. With that being said, if I wanted to see if that the appropriate identification document is is stored, uh, the identification document perhaps is just a copy of. Um, their, the employee's social security number um, or a social security card or driver's license. So right from that window, I can basically execute a subsequent search that will link to the uh, employee, employee identification document 
And right here now I can tile those two documents side by side. So I have the I-9 form over on the left and the identification document over on the right-hand side. So at this point, um, I just want to open up the, uh, to see, Steve, if there's any, uh, any questions. Yeah, I actually have a couple questions. Um, you know, this was an example of um, you know, how you would use Knowledge Lake for, for HR, but th this is not exclusively an HR app, and that's what the question was. This is not exclusively right. for HR. What are some of the other um, you know, business cases where you oftentimes see uh, the Knowledge Lake software being used? Sure. Probably one of the most common ones, along with human resources, and human resources is a great place to start. Another place a lot of our customers start is in accounting for, uh, for um, invoice processing. So we have, we have several customers who start by looking at the AP processes, the exception scenarios, non-PO based invoices, and what has to happen for review and approvals. And, you know, we have lots of different thresholds for uh, you know, who can sign for what. And so using this kind of technology has the same applicability to AP processes as it does to HR. Um, same thing in legal and contract review processes, very, very collaborative versioning is required there, right? And so, um, again, we're talking about document and process-driven functions. Then once you step out of those sort of back office departments, folks will look to those phase two and phase three projects where we talk more about the frontline transactional processes, and that depends on what you do for a living, right? For schools, it might be the student registration process. For higher ed, that could be, um, you know, their scholarship programs. For a, um, for a pharmaceutical company, we have customers using us to help support the documentation involved in clinical trials. Um, for uh, financial services organizations, it could be the new account opening process when they have you know, bank branches. Um, so the, the list goes on, but our customers many times, quite frankly, do start with one of those back office functions of HR, AP, or legal to get their feet wet. Um, and then start looking at phase two and phase three that are maybe uh, more highly transactional, greater time sensitivities, more complex workflows, greater numbers of document types, and so on. Excellent. Um, let's see, another, another question. Um, can you push metadata in, SharePoint, in a SharePoint content type back to a field in a document, such as in an I-9 form? And I think what the question is asking is, using something like Word Services or something, can you actually physically push it, not just into the header of the document, but actually push it into the, the document itself if it was a, a, a field? Um, so the, the metadata that, uh, that we basically uh, collect here is stored in the database um, and is not attached in the header file uh, of the document. Um, not We're not sure. actually modifying the document at this point. We can't take the data from an existing source and put it into a field in an electronic document. Gotcha. If that okay. was the question. Yeah, I think that was the question. Uh, next question is... Um, what we can do, though, let me, let me actually reiterate. What we can do, though, is, is if we're collecting data from a document um, that is going to be exported to a particular database or line of business system where a record that this document needs to be attached to might not exist, um, an example of that, a simple example of that might be a, an invoice comes in from a vendor that's never been, never done business with before, they're not in our vendor database. But we can collect the data that we need to from the invoice that just came in, and once you've entered that data, we can pass that data through now to our accounting system to start the process of creating that vendor, creating that record in the accounting system. So there is a lot that you can do with the metadata, which you can't take it and put it into an actual, into the actual document. Gotcha. Not the original document, that is. Um, next question is, um, could you do this, what the, the demo we just showed, the HR example, without a employee management system? If so, you know, how, how would you approach that? A absolutely. Um, you know, the, the employee management system or any line of business application will serve as a data source for us to tap into if the data that we're trying to collect for this document already exists. It helps expedite that indexing process and it helps to ensure accuracy and consistency of data, you know, from the document and then human resources you know, system. If you don't have an actual human resources application, um, but there are other sources of data, just an existing uh, database, right? Um, you know, we, we can tap into that. Everything can work without that existing source of data. That just helps to expedite the process and ensure the accuracy of data, you know, throughout the system. Gotcha. So we don't rely on that line of business application. 
And uh, I guess the last question, um, when you showed the example of the integration with uh, whether it be an HR system or uh, anything else, how, how was that, what were you using to do the integration there? Was that integration through your software, the BCS and SharePoint, um, or some other means? Yep, that is with our software. It happens to be actually a desktop installed piece of software. It's not using BCS, um, and it's doing sort of a, gosh, sort of a screen scraping type of a, a methodology here for grabbing that data off of that static screen and then passing that data through as a metadata-based search into SharePoint. So we're not actually integrating, you know, the line of business application with SharePoint. We're just through the browser enabling the capture of the data from the record through screen scraping type of methods and then passing that data through to return the results to the end user out of SharePoint. And we can very quickly, we've been able to test this with dozens of applications and we can configure that through wizard-driven methods. We can test it in about a half an hour with a line of business application that you have that we may not have tested before. That's an easy one. Okay. Oh, we got one more question came in. I'll make this our, our last question. Uh, what is the search technology used um, uh, to search the metadata if the volume is high? Yep. So we, um, we're going to leverage. We don't have a search engine. What you witnessed there was a search web part, right? So it's the interface. Behind that is going to be the search engine that you use today. It could be the, the native SharePoint search. It could be Microsoft Fast. Uh, it might be Coveo. Right? There's a number of search engines that are out there that we can leverage. For this demonstration, we use the native SharePoint search. We have customers using SharePoint, um, Microsoft Fast. Right? So it's not our own search engine. It's what you currently have. And that's the idea of running through all of our technology. We're leveraging SharePoint, leveraging your infrastructure. This has no overhead. You manage the environment with Knowledge Lake the way you manage your environment without Knowledge Lake, the SharePoint environment that will. So it requires no specialized or proprietary skill sets. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it. Um, Dave and John, I appreciate your time. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, let me get to the last screen here. I'll take control back. Uh, if anybody has any questions uh, following up from the webinar, um, they can email Dave, his email is up on the screen, or contact me, uh, Steve Witt, at stevew.suspitech.com. And thanks again, everybody, for your time. And again, our next webinar is on June 7th, where we'll be covering a, a rundown of mobile apps for SharePoint. Thanks again, Dave. Thanks, thanks again, John. Have a good afternoon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye now.